last presentation uh, for today. Um, now Thomas uh, will tell us something about um, M Collective and well, enjoy. Thank you, Christian. Good afternoon. <coughs> We're talking about M Collective, a great, fantastic, super potent orchestration framework or something like this. Um, first, let me start with a short self-introduction. Um, well, I'm Thomas, I'm from South Tyrol, so that's that region of Italy where people speak something like German. So everything you heard about the Italian English, it's true, and uh, if you're from that region, it's, it's even less. I'll, I try to do my very best, but yeah, please forgive me, it's not that good. Um, yeah, I joined Netways a few years ago, and I'm doing a lot of Puppet stuff since then. I'm traveling around as a, yeah, mostly in consulting projects, doing trainings, all such stuff. And the most, the most important thing is that since uh, this morning, I'm a, a certified developer, 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 developer. <laughs> yeah, um, they will send me the new logo in a few days, so I had to fix it by myself. I managed to get more than 90% and I had 100% for M Collective. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One more slide and we're going on to M Collective. You all know NetWays, that's that amazing company that organized the conference here. Um, we are Puppet Labs partners since a long time. We're doing puppet consulting, puppet training, and yeah, we. You find everything about our trainings on, on our website. We're doing the puppet fundamentals, the advanced, and of course the extending puppet trainings. And yeah, sometimes you, you could meet me there. Uh, this talk is about Marionette Collective. We'll, I'll start with a, with a quick introduction, but uh, in a different way. I have just one slide saying what we're talking about, and then we start with, with basic use cases, explaining what people are doing with M Collective. Um, then I'll try to say something about this architecture, security, and such topics, and then try to explain what you can, what, what fancy stuff you could do, what our customers are doing, what what interesting things M Collective can be used for. Yeah, the, usual, the typical game, hands up. Who, who heard about M Collective? Yeah, great. Mm, who tried it out? Huh? Who is running it in production? Uh, <laughs> doing useful stuff with it? OK. <laughs> That's why we're here, great. Um, well, first introduction slides, M Collective itself. It has been initially architectured and written by RP, uh, RI PNR. Um, we are at version 2.2.4, if I'm not wrong right now. Uh, the development branch is at 2.3.3. So the even numbers are the stable version, and uh, the odd numbers are the, the development ones. Uh, it's written in, yes, yeah, so surprise, Ruby. But of course, you can write Shell, Perl, PHP agents, even from Marina Collective, if you don't like Ruby. Um, and it's an orchestration framework. So in theory, M Collective is used to do, well, deploy applications, take application servers out of lo your load balancer, do an upgrade, put them back into production. But uh, that's Scenarios like this is not what M Collective does out of the box, but what many people think it, it would do, as it's an orchestration framework. But uh, the wording framework tells us that this is a framework, so you need to invest some time, you need to do some work to get something useful out of it. Um, as usual with Puppet Labs products, uh, documentation is great. You should start with that link, and then you'll find lots of useful information. Documentation for M Collective used to be a little bit difficult to understand, and there hasn't been so much. But right now, it's it's pretty good. They did a very good work. Um, well, M Collective, maybe 
you have probably seen those slides showing the message queue and everything around there and uh, the broker and I decided to have to start with just one single slide saying that well we are going to send a command to lots of servers to a specific set to one specific server all the servers execute the commands and reply and say everything is fine and and well, that's it. We need some kind of middleware. That's, that's black magic. We, we do not know what the middleware is doing. Maybe some of you, but most typical Unix admins are skeptic when it goes to message queues. But you can even easily manage those beasts. Uh, there's, there are some more things, but um, I'll really... I, I, today I want to start with, with use cases. Just before explaining the product, Product, I'm going to, to tell you what people are doing with mCollective. Use case one. They use mCollective to break the rules. We finally have this defined state. We have Puppet and we declare those defined states. And it, that's beautiful. That's great. That's how it should be. And many people hate it. Yeah, that's, that's, they, they, it's no longer possible to do things very quick. So mCollective is great because um, we are allowed to use it. It is part of Puppet, so yeah, this, this is the Puppet way, and with mCollective we can break all the rules, we can do everything live on the fly, and um, that might be a reason to use mCollective, and it often is. Um, with that in mind, here's one example how I could use Marina Collective. I just say MCO, Puppet Resource, Package, well, some package name, I used, used three, this could be Apache, this could be everything. This should be absent. And it works. This will remove this package from all your servers without filter live immediately, in parallel. Uh, I did it with just two servers here, so you see there's one host that removed the package, there's another host telling me that well, Puppet is managing the pa package, so somehow M Collective has been able to figure out what Puppet is doing on that node and refused to do this work. This makes sense, as life management and configuration management are two different things, and if I tell M Collective to remove the package, the package is still defined in my Puppet module, so then at the next Puppet run it will reinstall the package. So. This is a pretty intelligent default setting and collective says or refuses to, to remove this package. But of course, you can tell him to do it nonetheless. So there's a, a little setting, you say I want to allow even managed resources and then you can do everything. So you can manage all your resources live with M collective. Even if they manage by puppet. And that leads me to the next use case. The emergency button. This is great. This is great. This is what um, well, even our operating guys are doing. If sometimes, rarely, you roll out new Puppet module, something goes wrong. You immediately stop all Puppet agents and find out what went, went wrong. You have no time to write new modules, so you are using M Collective to fix it somehow live. Um, well, if this is what you're usually doing, or always doing, after rolling out modules, then something is going wrong. So you, you should test your modules. You can write great tests, and they're, they're useful not only for certifications, but also in, in real life. So <laughs> they are. I had a beauty, beautiful example last week for a customer where they, they did, didn't do anything wrong. Um, large bank, they are going to move to Puppet Enterprise because of AX support and so on. And well, the example was a custom function getting something from LDAP. The same function on the new environment would have moved all servers from, well, theoretically moved from one data center to the other one. Because the problem was the new Ruby LDAP library gave them an array instead of a string, and they casted it to a string, and the result has been scary. And 
as I knew that I had to do the developer exam this morning, what I did last week is I wanted to write some tests just to refresh the topic because uh, I'm not so often writing tests. So I made just one sample test and really the first test I, I did catch that error. The test didn't succeed and it, it took me some time to find out what was going on, but really it was that test that caught that error. And um, I showed it to them, and they were t totally happy, and I could write a test for the, for the rest of the week, so I was well prepared this morning. Um, you should write them. They are fantastic. But sometimes, if something goes wrong with Puppet, and you didn't test everything perfectly, stopping all agents, doing something manually with M Collective, that's a good use case. That's what many people are doing. Um, archaeology. You could use M Collective to find out what's going on. How many different Tomcat versions are floating around? How many Apache versions are you using? Whatever. Um, if this is you, if you have an environment where you don't know what, what's really running, what versions of software are in production, then, then it's time for a short commercial break. I have to show this. Um, Puppet Enterprise. It's um, this is one part of the of the enterprise console that's that's, that's great, and I haven't seen anything in in free frontends, and they're very good ones, um, that is able to do something like this. You can, for example, it's just one screenshot, stolen somewhere. Um, I'm I. Examined a specific user, and uh, the front end, uh, the web front end, told me that I have three different versions. I have the user with different home directories, different shells, and so on. And that I choose just one variant, being on just one specific node, and click the clone button. And then it tells me, with the filter I applied here, this would change or override the user on on one node and overwriting in a different way on another node, so there are not so many nodes, but uh, this, it, it doesn't care if you have 10 or 1,000 nodes. This works. And it would, for example, if there are some nodes without that user, it would tell you that it would create it there. This works for a specific Tomcat version. It works for every resource you have in Puppet. Um, the enterprise GUI is pretty cool. Um, you can, but you can do everything you see here or do there, even uh, also on the console uh, or script your own GUI. It's just um, if you want something fancy out of the box with a red button for the boss, so if there's a problem, he can fix it just with a mouse click. That's the tool you want. Not only for this. Uh, it's really, the yeah. Um, Sorry. Other use case, uh, Puppet Health. On console, I can say Puppet, MCO Puppet Summary. Mm, this is a really awful screenshot. If you have a lot of nodes, it's, it looks a little bit better. You see timings, you see if something, if Puppet is running um, slow on some of your nodes and so on. This is also interesting. Yeah? If you want to use M Collective just on CLI, find out. How behave? How are your servers behaving? Run Puppet MCO summary, and you get a quick, immediate. Peter. It makes sense as soon as you have many nodes. Uh, then you you see the uh, you see the minimum and maximum duration. And then you see low and high bars, uh, and you see if, yeah. Exactly. And we've, we've to know that yeah, the numbers make sense, the, the, the picture doesn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, usually you should, uh, even if you, um, Puppet Enterprise is a great reporting front end. On backend, um, foreman and others are also so. Um, you should install one of them or just a puppet dashboard. I I live on CLI. I'm my editor is VI and so on. But a reporting GUI for my puppet that's that's really something you want to have in in your environment. So this is great. This is a cool tool. But uh, do not throw away the the web frontend. Just 
for these statistics. Um, many people use M Collective as a replacement for Puppet Kick. Who knows about Puppet Kick? Who used it? And who is still using it? Ah, yeah. It's deprecated some, some time. Um, Puppet Kick, for those who don't know it, uh, allows you to trigger Puppet runs on demand. What I needed time ago for this is I had to tell the Puppet agent to listen. Yeah, so it is a security, or it used to be a security issue, because you have a daemon running as root, listening to a TCP port, accepting something crazy like YAML. And, but it allowed you to say, I want to have immediately a Puppet run on that node. It uses the same REST API as the Puppet Master does. The problem was, A, is it a security problem, then it doesn't scale so, good, so very well, and as there is M Collective, Puppet Labs deprecated Puppet Kick. And so to do it the Puppet way, you could, can use or you should use M Collective as a much better drop-in replacement. Um, this allows you to stop your Puppet agent everywhere. You can do this manually, you can configure it, you can run MCO service stop Puppet, and in parallel, everywhere, your puppet demons, your puppet agents will stop. Um, then you have different ways of running puppet. You can, for example, say, I want to, yeah, you have run once or run all. They do similar things in a different way. So right now, I can run every command in a batched mode. So I can say, um, run puppet on always 10 nodes at a time. The batch mode is a little bit different. I say, do run it on 10 nodes, then don't care about how long it takes, 10 minutes later, run it on the next 10 nodes, and so on. Because running puppets once on all the servers will, will kill my puppet master. Um, you can enable and disable puppets from M Collective. So I can also pass a message and say disabled for that reason, and then enable it only on, those, on nodes with a specific reason. And this would prevent Puppet from run, if you say MCO Puppet run once or run all, and those nodes who are disabled will not do a Puppet run. So that's pretty great to put some nodes in maintenance mode or something like this. That's cool. And yeah, you can run this manually. You did a change. You change, do changes rarely, very seldom, then you can run manually my puppet run all and that's it. Or you can run it triggered by a cron job by your CI server like Jenkins. Uh, with Puppet Enterprise in the GUI, it's just one mouse click. Um, you can combine this with access lists, and this is pretty cool. I can, for example, say my operations guys are allowed uh, to start and stop services, but only those that are in maintenance mode. So if I disable the puppet, a puppet by M Collective, then I can, for example, create an access list based on the fact that they are disabled, without even using facts, and then they are allowed to send commands to just those nodes. And I can say, well, developers, they, they are allowed to do everything, of course, they, they want to do everything, but only in their environments, and not in production. Um, well, myself, I'm, I'm a certified Puppet developer. I'm allowed to do everything. And what you need to do something like this is a so-called Action Policy Authorization plugin. We'll talk about plugins later. This is one of them. And it just works. A little new use case. Um, Doppelte Verneinung. That's something you, you learn at school. And I do not disagree, I haven't seen nothing, and I don't want to go nowhere. Um, you might question what this has to do with Puppet, but also Puppet has something like this, and this is the no no hope. Did you know this? It exists, it's pretty cool. Uh, you could, for example, set no hope to just resources or no hope globally in your Puppet conf and do no operation per default. Yeah, so Puppet runs, you keep it running regularly, and you do not do anything, but you get those what would happen when, when reports. And then you see those reports and see that something would happen, and then you say, okay, today is Monday, that's a good day, let's, 
let's trigger it, and then you run with M Collective Puppet on demand with no no op. Uh, yeah. That's something people often ask me, how can I deploy just one specific module? Yeah. Mm, you should write your modules in a way that they are idempotent, and it's an important word and important for certification, for the, um, even for the prof Puppet Professional one. And so you can run Puppet every, every 10 minutes if you want, or every half an hour, nothing will happen. Uh, everything is fine, and you know that if someone changes something live in production on those servers, Puppet will change it back. Um, this might work for you, but it, there are some people saying, well, no, I, I do not want to run Puppet all the time. I, I want to run it just when I change something with every new software release, and that's it. And then this could be a solution. Running Puppet once, I can say Puppet agent minus minus tech or run once here with, with M Collective. And then this would apply only those resources, classes, who knows, flagged with those tags. But if you're going to use tags, really be careful. A lot of magic is going on with tags in Puppet. So every class name is automatically a tag, every resource name also. And so if you um, just, Puppet usually stores reports of the last run to YAML files, and, or somewhere you'll find them. Just have a look at them, have a look at the tags written there, and uh, try to find out where they came from. Uh, tags could be dangerous. If you're using very long class names and just use class names as text. This, this should work fine, but take care. Um, yeah, the CMDB. In theory, in perfect ITIL way, we are doing all changes um, in a way that we plan it, we describe it, we write it to the CMDB that there will be some change, someone will approve it, and then it's Maybe automatically it will be done by Puppet, or it could be done the other way around. No one wants to fill the CMDB, there's very old data, there are no correct serial numbers and so on, and you have factor, and so you could use all those data to, to feed the CMDB. You don't have to do this with M Collective. You can write your own report handlers, you can do so after each Puppet run, but if you stop running Puppet and run it just on demand if you need it, you will no longer have re re reports all the time, so you could run MCO inventory, from time to time to, to gather information about your nodes and collect facts. What I'm showing here is you can use, for example, you could directly use factor as a factors. Sometimes you have to configure this manually, so you install them collective and are wondering why your filters will not work. It's it always runs on all nodes or no nodes, so it ignores your facts-based filters. It could, the reason could be that you didn't provide a factors to factor. Um, yeah, you could also say, well, I want to cache this, I want to write it to a YAML file and give that YAML file to factor as a source. These are just examples. Um, but yeah, filling the CMDB could be a use case from Collective. Um, and the last of the Simple, basic, out-of-the-box use cases is this one. Do you love certificates with puppets? <laughs> um, well, they are great if you really understood them and planned everything well, and then you could um, manage them in a comfortable way, but it could happen that you destroyed everything and uh, your agents will refuse to talk to the master, and then M Collective is a pretty, co a pretty good tool. So what, what happens here is I'm running MCO Puppet Resource, so I can manage, as we've seen before, every single resource with puppets, and hey, there is the exec resource, and I run, delete all the certificates. This thing here is pretty cool. I Use puppet agent minus minus config prints to get the configuration of the SSL directory. Because, for example, uh, Puppet Enterprise has a completely different directory than the default Debian package, for example. So instead of hard coding a directory, I can use Puppet to find this out. And I'm deleting all files in that directory. 
Uh, and then I can trigger a Puppet Agent run, and everything will restart from scratch. I can sign all certificates, and everything is fine. Uh, usually, exec is blacklisted. Um, you, you have to <laughs> It makes sense. You, if, if you want to, to use it, then you have to white or blacklist the orders or something like that. Um, this, that's the setting that you should Google for if you, if you want to change this. The <coughs> oh, by the way, I'm always talking about settings in the Marionette Collective server or client config file here. Uh, plugin. Puppet is the config for the Puppet plugin, so each plugin in Marionette Collective has its own config, and the Puppet plugin is one of them. Um, yeah. We skipped some basic stuff. I didn't tell you how M Collective really works, just uh, I told something about the, about the message queue. Um, I thought that it might be boring for many of you, so um, we have seen some things on the slides until now that might be or might look strange to those who haven't seen it before. So one thing I really should mention are filters. I can run my M collective commands and they run in in parallel through that message queue to all my servers in parallel. So if I do not provide any filter, everybody gets the command. But <coughs> usually I, I want to, to do it on just a few servers and what M Collective states is that you do no longer have to run commands based on host names. Host names are dead. Uh, you run commands based on facts, based on roles. I can say, run and um, use the resource Apache and stop it on all servers with the role load balancer and only for servers with the fact customer whatever. Um, these are three examples. You could use minus capital F or minus minus with fact OS family Debian, and this will run on all Debian boxes. You can use class names, so I say minus minus class. Usually I use some role classes and filter based on those, and only all application servers should restart Tomcat. And I can combine them. That's the minus minus with. I can say I have want this customer and specific classes. Um, there are some well old school filters too. I can filter based on host name. You should pay attention. The identity in M Collective is usually the host name, and in Puppets you have the full qualified domain name in your certificates. So this doesn't match. What you should do is. Configure and collective with puppets and write your host name as identity for M collective. So you have the same names, the same identities everywhere. And what you really should do, do not trust facts for this. Do not use FQDN or host name because facts can be faked. Yeah? The, if someone breaks in a box and is able to gain root on that box, it will be easily able to send me fake facts at the next, next Puppet run. And if it's going to tell me that its host name is the host name of the master, well, he will get useless catalogs, uh, but he could be able to get what I configure on the master for M Collective. He could get certificates or something like this. And it depends on your configuration. So if you're doing anything security sensitive, then you should base this on the certificate name. And this is something I cannot fake. Don't trust your facts. It's just one example. So if I'm, I'm configuring, um, I'm using modules, doing everything on the fly, using Puppet certificates for I'm collective and so on. But um, if I do something like this based on the facts hostname or FQDN, uh, this could go badly wrong. Third name is the name of your certificate, and you cannot fool this. Ah, and there's another filter, the agents. So if you're writing own plugins, own commands, you could also filter based on, on the commands and say, I want to run this only on those nodes providing that plugin. This makes sense if you are distributing different M Collective plugins to, to different nodes. And, well, the coolest filter is the minus minus select filter. These are data plugins. 
There are already this. This is pretty new, but there are already a lot of lots of data plugins available. You could, for example, say, "I want to do something only on those nodes where Puppet is managing Apache," or the other way around: uh, run Puppet with a specific tag, and only on those nodes where Apache is not managed by by Puppet, or whatever, something like this. Um, there's a, an fstats data plugin telling me MD5 sums and other information about files. Uh, if Puppet destroyed something, I can create a filter and say do something only on those nodes that have that file with a modification time greater than something. Uh, this is this is pretty great. Yeah. So I already touched that were the filters. What I also skipped was the, the security part. Um, with mCollective, what you're going to set up, and I have no picture for this, is you need a message queue. You can use ActiveMQ, that works very well. You could use RabbitMQ or something else. A message queue is just a layer transporting messages. It's, yeah, for the mail server guys, it's the mail server. To an IRC guy, I would explain that it's the IRC network. Um, it's gets a message and sends the message to all those who subscribe to that kind of message, to that message topic. And that's how it works. It's just like a, a TCP IP layer. Uh, I'm sending messages and nodes get messages and send replies. What's, um, there are two important things here. First, not everybody should be able to connect to your message queue. So um, you should allow first only SSL. That's important, because if I can sniff such a message, I can do bad things, so allow only SSL. Um, you could reuse your Puppet certificate for doing so. Um, so you could tell your ActiveMQ server to trust the certificate generated by your Puppet CA. But, uh, you find examples on configuring this on the web or on the Puppet Labs website. Um, this is what I usually do, and this works great. Everybody owning a certificate signed by Puppet will be able to connect to the message queue. It doesn't mean that it's able to do anything, it's just able to connect. Then uh, you can create different users and different groups of users in the message queue. You should at least have one group for admins, those that send commands, and for all the others, like mCollective or servers or something like that, where uh, you put yeah, everybody else. Um, then. What you also should do is, um, it, you, you can do authentication. Once connected to the message queue, you have to authenticate yourself. You can do so based on username and password, or you can also, uh, you can do so with, uh, yeah, username and password makes sense, but uh, this is not so secure. You distribute this password to every node, and uh, it's a lot of work to generate one password for every node, or a different one for every node, so you usually um, create one for all your nodes or one per customer. You can also create some kind of partitioned message queue with so-called sub-collective. That's also pretty useful. But um, that's what I want to say is the password alone is, is not enough. Uh, do not trust it. So what you can also do is sign your messages. And you can use the SSL security plugin it's one example that works pretty good to sign your messages. There's also an AES one encrypting it per destination. It doesn't work so good and doesn't fit the, the, the whole message queue model. What I usually do is create one certificate used by all nodes. So as, a, as the part that sends command, the so-called client, I'm the one sitting here with the laptop sending and collective commands. Um, I accept answers only by those using that private key used by everyone. That's just to, to not allow everybody to send responses. But it, much more important is the other part. Everybody allowed to send commands. These are the, the clients in mCollective speech. This could be the Puppet Master itself. That could be user Thomas on, in his home directory. I, all clients sending commands should use certificates. I create my own private key. And what I usually do is I distribute the public keys for all those um, allowed to send commands to, to all my nodes where I'm allowed to do so. So if everything fails, someone breaks in, is able to send commands to my message queue, he still needs a valid private key fitting the public keys distributed to my agents. 
Otherwise, they will get the messages from the message queue, but they will refuse to use it because the checksum, the, the, the signing doesn't, doesn't fit. Um, I just wanted to mention this. It's, uh, it's very important. There's nothing you can explain in such a talk, but read about this. What you really should not do, just install it and put it in production. For example, um, a very good module is from Puppet Labs. The, um, you can install Puppet Labs and Collective, and you can configure everything. The problem is, if you read the documentation, and you should, and there's this sentence here, and it mentions that the default installation uses Node.ls, a well-known set of usernames and passwords and so on. So if you just install M Collective, I, can, I don't even need to sit on one of those nodes. I can sniff one message and I, I control your network. M Collective is not a daemon listening to a port, but it's a daemon uh, connecting itself to the message queue. But if I'm able to write there, I can control everything. and I'm root everywhere. Um, so it's a very cool tool, but it's dangerous. In Western time, sit down and try to lock it down to, to secure it. It's very well documented, but it's a lot of text. You should read it. Um, yeah, the disadvantage of this module is that if you're going to secure it, you have to do a lot of manual stuff, manually generate certificates, um, manually configure them, and. It's really, it, it isn't fun. You, you probably will end up with some custom module doing this automatically. Um, yeah, just wanted to, to say this. And Collective is cool, try it out, but please invest some time and make it secure. Oh, my time is running away. Well, this is where the, the special things start. I make it very quick just to get you an, to give you an idea of what could be done. With what you have seen right now are just basic things. This is provided by M Collective out of the box. This, it works. But um, if you say, I want to, to do real orchestration, I have application clusters, I want to take some application servers out of the load balancing, do an upgrade on those servers, run some tests, then put them back into the load balancer, take the next servers out, do the upgrade there, something scheduled orchestration like this is not possible out of the box. You have to script it yourself. But M Collective allows you to do so. And I'm sorry for going on quickly now. Um, this means First, search for plugins. There are a lot of plugins. For example, it's just very few examples. You can manage IP tables live. <laughs> Deny something everywhere now. Works. <laughs> um, you shouldn't lock out M Collective. This could be a problem, but yeah. Um, there are, well, this is just very few examples. Uh, there's such a list of available plugins on the Puppet Lab site, and there are lots, much more on GitHub and so on. Um, there is, what you are searching for could already be somewhere. Then, um, very few words about registration. The idea or the uh, original philosophy of M Collective was there is no central source of truth, so I need no database about my servers. I just ask the network. And this is great. I ask who is there, who is fitting my filters, and those fitting the filters answer. But the problem is everything is stateless, so there is a timeout, and if within this timeout one node doesn't answer, he will not get my command. And um, the problem, in very large environments, you don't care. It's like, okay, everything answering will be upgraded, boom, and go on. If you have few servers, then it's important for you that, that those servers do everything right. The problem is that <coughs> you then have to, be, to take care somehow that it happened on those servers, and you will end up scripting something around M Collective or whatever to, to handle this. You could also skip the... Before each command, M Collective does some kind of... Uh, well, it pings around and asks, who is fitting my filter, and then it's once again sending the commands. And so it knows who, which servers have to, to issue the commands. Um, you could use registration plugins, and that's the matches of this slide. Um, have a look at them. You can put all this information to a database. There are some attempts to couple it with PuppetDB. Mm, not so finished yet, but that's a pretty good idea if you're using it. Um, I'm one of those guys preferring to know which servers are affected before I ask the network. Because there are large environments that think completely different. Then writing simple agents is easy. If you love Ruby, it's, it looks something like that. Just um, I write, 
a new class that's a hello world agent. I define the action hello and as a reply message, I give you the request message you gave me in your request and that's it. The RPC and collective subcommands allows you to do such things easily. Another example, a bad one, exec. I create my own M collective MC, uh, MCO RPC exec and run whatever commands. I just reply the output of the command you gave me the request. Think about it, but it's possible. Or you could also, if this is too much Ruby for you, you can write an action like this. Uh, you write your own Perl script and implement the action with that script. You have to care about two command line arguments telling you where to put the output and, and that's it. Documentation is very good. These are the so-called simple RPC agents. Um, next step would be writing clients uh, to orchestrate something and write storybooks doing something first in those servers then on the other ones. This could be something like this. I include a collective RPC, create a new client, and then with the client object, I can run commands and catch each response. But the problem is, in this code block here, I have to take care that everybody answered, that it affected all the servers I want to. So this is logic you have to write in Ruby. So this is where the orchestration ends. This is where you're on your own. You have to write your own Ruby stuff. I wanted to show you, I have three minutes remaining, show you just one example I did. I wanted to show more, but we have, we have no, we're out of time. Okay, um, I have two servers here. And, well, I run MCO, ping. Oop. Yeah, everything is fine. I can say, uh, you see, it is waiting. Everybody answered, but it doesn't know how many servers are here. So it waits until the timer is reached, and then it, it finishes. This is how I'm collective work. Each command takes more or less the same amount of time, because it, it fires and forgets. And so do not forget anything. It just waits for the timeout and collects all answers. Um, then I say MCO, well, just one quick shot, uh, puppet. Yeah, let's run the summary. Yeah, this is what we have seen before. Nothing happens here. Um, I want to show you just one example I did recently to, to extend M Collective. It's pretty cool. The idea was we want to handle long running jobs. Uh, the customer took many minutes or even an hour to fill the initial database and so on. This is nothing you can do with Puppet. This is nothing you sh can do with M Collective so easily. So, in theory, we had to write a completely new job management system or something like that, or job handling system. And this is not something you can do very quickly. But what I used was just the new the screen, the screen commands. Do you know screen? I run command in a screen session, and then I can disconnect. Everything is fine. So what we did is we used a specific prefix for jobs related to M Collective. I start commands in screen sessions and configure screen in a way to not stop working even if the command dies, if it stops, if it finishes, um, to write log output. And then you can pretty cool stuff. And what I'm doing here is, maybe write it a little bit larger, MGO. I did a job command. And I say MCO help job. And then I see, oops, yeah, there are different jobs. MCO job cleanup, screenshot, and so on. This is, this is what we did. So let's try it out. MCO job, I allowed every command, and I start free. Um, take some time, runs it everywhere. I got a message, and this is not so interesting. I ask for MCO job summary. And I see, well, it is finished on one of them. Oh, it is it's even unknown on my first note. Who knows why? Well, we'll have a look at it later. What I can do is MCO job screenshot. And get the output from all of my nodes. But that, that, that's not so interesting. But even if the command already stopped, but I still get the screenshot until I clean up. Um, let's start something different. Job start top. I can also give it a title and run a much larger command. And usually it uses the, by default it uses the title as a command. Now it's, it's running top and let's kill it. Or yeah, kill 
all top. And here I'll do something completely different. I'll kill all uh, bit of no, just kill. So I destroyed it one time in a good way. I stopped the command, and on the other note, I I killed it. And now let's let's have a look at this. Well, we can get a screenshot even if it it stopped running. And this works, you see one node and the other node uh, both gave me the output. I can say, I do not want to have a screenshot, I want a complete dump of the commands. And then it's replaying everything with all ANSI characters. This looks a little bit, well, awful if you dump it, but uh, makes, for example, sense for a puppet run, then you get the output with all colors and so on. And um, yeah, let's have a look at the summary. And here I see the job is finished on one node and unknown on the other one. And three is finished on both. So this is unfinished yet. It's just an example of uh, how you could approach such problems. What we would do here is we are already able to write Ruby stories, um, but I can fire a job and forget about it. I do not need to have one command running for a long time unless the whole story finished on all nodes. And so I can refire my script up every time and ask this, the current state of all jobs, uh, how they are currently, if they're finished, if everything was fine. I get the exit code, so the state is finished if it's OK, and if it's still running, it's another exit code, and if it's terminated badly, it's the exit code of the commands. Um, but I invented nothing new. I'm just, I wrote a little wrapper around screen. Uh, so, and where I want to get with this thing here could be or uh, using the Puppet parcel and using the Puppet language to describe those jobs. And then I say, this job with a specific filter requires another job, and it will not move on to the next one if the first one finishes in time. And it's just, just one example, one idea what, what you could do with M Collective. The message is M Collective itself does a lot of very useful things. Um, if you want to do more stuff, more crazy stuff, then you are in your own and you have to sit down and script a little bit. But in my beliefs, it's worth the time. Try it out. Have fun. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, any questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Question was: um, You install M Collective, uh, you install ActiveMQ, and you um, are left with a system after a few days, uh, ActiveMQ running at 100% CPU and. Um, yeah, it's a mess. Um, what you should do, ActiveMQ is, is a beast, but it's not so hard to understand. Um, for mcollective, for example, usually you do not need all the stateful stuff. Um, ActiveMQ could persist messages. You can disable all of this. You need only a completely stateful message queue. And in message queues, there's a very... Uh, the difference between a stateful and a, let's call it state... Uh, yeah, stateless and stateful queue is a lot of work for the message queue itself. So if the message queue has to take care of keep messages and wait for an answer that might come in two days, uh, that's very expensive. So you can switch off that part completely. What you should use it uh, do also is use a recent version. Use at least ActiveMQ 5.8. Um, I believe it's running pretty fine. Um, older versions have more problems. Uh, yeah, mail me. I can, can send you an example config. It's, it's not so easy to configure it in a way to, to do nothing, nothing complicated. And if you tell ActiveMQ to do nothing of that expensive stuff, it runs pretty fine. Uh, 
Um, again, so the question was um, if whether I could give an advice if uh, an advice if an one active MQ is enough for 2,000 nodes. Honestly, no, it should. If you do everything stateless, it should be enough. You can scale MQ very well. You can run them in just redundant or very complicated distributed setups. That's possible, but um, it, it also depends on the amount of messages you send. Uh, if you say, I run one active MQ for 2,000 nodes and do a registration every five seconds, then it's expensive. And what, you, but what you could, for example, do is tell your M collective agents, uh, sorry, servers, to, um, to register themselves every few seconds just to have a keep alive. Uh, and it's good, this is good uh, if you have firewalls. Uh, um, but this can also be expensive, so it really depends on the amount of, of messages. Full stop. Uh, message queue with 2,000 nodes should be fine. The message queue itself. Um, well, there are different tools involved. So you have um, one w important component Tom? is the message queue. Tom? Active MQ. Yeah. Can you please repeat your question? Hmm? Ah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The question was, um, how does it scale? Does it run on just one CPU? Um, the, the whole thing. Yeah. And the answer is, well, there are multiple, multiple demons. So one thing is the, the active MQ. That's the yeah. That's one component that could be hammered and that could use a lot of resources. And as far as I know, active MQ is not using multiple processes. It's using threads, as far as I know, intensively. But it, you can configure this behavior, yeah? and even this has been improved from version to version, and um, yeah, uh, as far as I know, they're going to replace something and do it completely different with ActiveMQ 6. Th that's not here yet, as far as I know. So um, ActiveMQ itself, I do not know how, how intelligent it uses multiple CPUs. In my eyes, no. Uh, so if, if you're going to have CPU problems with ActiveMQ, throw in multiple boxes. More questions? Then thank you very much. Have a nice journey home, and thank you for being here. Maybe see you in Berlin at the next Papa Camp. Bye. All right. Thank you, Tom. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, those who have a very long trip home, now we have prepared several lunch packages uh, at our corner. Um, Thank you for coming, thank you for, to Puppet Labs and uh, all the contributors for um, making such a great tool and also to all people behind the conference making it possible. Um, there is also, we have sent you an email with the feedback formula, so it would be great if you would send it back, if you can improve something, make something better and hopefully see you next year in Berlin. Enjoy! <laughs>